hi everyone present here today we are going to uh, start the session 3 of unit 2 that is combinational mass logic circuits already we have uh, discussed about the static cmos so we are seeing the design consideration while we want to design any circuits we have to consider these all the points so last class we have seen what is input delay ordering effect that means the gate will work faster than an inner input array greater than the outer input. So here the input A is nothing but inner input and B is the outer input because outer input is connect, uh, connected very close to the power rail such as uh, VDD or ground. Whereas the inner input mean which is very close to our output. So this input is arrived later than the outer input our gate will work faster. Right, that we have already seen. The next uh, uh, design consideration is asymmetric gates. Actually, uh, if any one of the input is far, far less critical than the other, we can convert our symmetrical gate into asymmetrical gate to favor that particular input. Okay. For example, I am taking this circuit. In this circuit, uh, we have two inputs. One input is A and another input is B. Okay. So, in this, which one is critical means definitely the uh, input A is the critical one. Okay. Because the A will be uh, keep on changing, but the reset will be used once in a while. So, the reset button is always less critical than the input A. So, here, uh, in order to favor the input A, we can convert the symmetrical gate into asymmetrical gate. Symmetrical gate means you know that um, this is our NAND gate, right? Already we know how to design this. This is our NAND gate. And here it is NMOS, that is pull down network consists of NMOS and pull up network consists of PMOS, right? So this is our design. So in this design, all the width of the transistors are 2 right so because of this width what happened it will produce the resistance of r by 2 because r by k for each n mass the width is 2 no so r by 2 plus here also r by 2 the total resistance is r here we have chosen the uh, width is 2 for p mass so individually we have to calculate the resistance so here for p mass the formula is 2 r by k here K is nothing but the 2, thereby individually the transistor contributing resistance of R. So, falling also R, uh, rising also R. So, equal rise and fall delay, that's why it is called symmetric. Equal rise and fall delay, that's why this type of gate is called as symmetrical gate. So, we have to convert the symmetrical gate into asymmetrical gate. See here, I will um, choose the width of the transistor in such a way that I have to favor my input A. How to favor is, see here I have to choose the width of the transistor, uh, this transistor in such a way that it must produce the resistance of R. Anyway, it has to produce the resistance of R. How to uh, choose the resistance R means, see here if I am choosing the width is uh, 4 by 3. 4 by 3 means this transistor contributing the resistance of R by K. No, so R by K is nothing but 4 by 3. So, thereby 3 R by 4 is the resistance contributed by this transistor. And for this transistor, uh, the resistance is nothing but the R by 4. Anyway, both we have to add together. So, 3 R by 4 plus R by 4. I am getting 4 R by 4 which is nothing but R. See so anyway these two uh, transistors connectively producing the resistance of R. But the width will be chosen differently. For this transistor the width is 4. This transistor width is 4 by 3. So it is called asymmetric gate. The width of the transistor will be different. Right. Both the NMOS is not having a same width. So this is called asymmetric gate. So, what is the um, speciality of this asymmetric gate is, see here, whenever 
if you want to calculate the uh, logical effort at a input a for the symmetrical gain so this input a is connected to one p mass and one n mass so n mass and p mass both are having the width of 2 here also 2 thereby total capacitance at the input a is 4c capacitance so logical effort formula is input capacitance of this gate divided by input capacitance of the inverter inverter always we have the capacitance is 3c so it is 4 by 3 is the logical effort of this one okay whereas we are going to calculate the logical effort for the asymmetrical gate of this so here ga equal to so at the input a it is connected to uh, this p mass transistor with this one thereby here i am having one capacitance right and similarly here also we have another um, this is connected to this team this input a is connected to here that is 4 by 3 this is 1 by 1 c right so here how much capacitance is it is nothing but the 4 by 3 capacitance so totally 4 by 3 plus 1 c capacitance so how much it is divided by we know that inverter having 3 c so here 10 c by 3 so which is nothing but the 3 point sorry here it is um, 10 c by 9 c so 9 c means it is 1 point something right so here it is 1.133 but here the logical effort is 1.11 so logical effort is lesser for this asymmetrical gate when compared to asymmetrical gate asymmetrical gate okay so if the logical effort is lesser means as we all know that it is the delay will be lesser because the delay is nothing but the parasitic delay plus product of logical effort as well as electrical effort if g is lesser the delay will be lesser if d is uh, delay is lesser the speed will be higher that's why we have to convert if any one of the input is far far less critical than the other we can convert the symmetrical gate into asymmetrical gate by choosing the different width right so as i hope that everyone clear about this the next consideration is skewed gate. What is mean by skewed gate is, suppose when one input transition is more important than the other. We have two transition, one is falling, another one is rising, right. So falling transition is, uh, if you want to favor the uh, rising transition, rising output, we, can, we have to go for the I skewed gates, okay. If you want to favor the falling transition, we have to go for the low skewed gate. Unskewed gate means it, it will uh, it won't favor any of the transition. Both the transition are equal. Okay, that is called unskewed uh, gates. Okay, both the transition are equal. See here, the logical effort of rising as well as falling. Rising means <coughs> GU represented by GU. Falling is represented by GD. Both are equally one, so it is unskewed. Here also another example for the two input NAND gate. Both rising as well as falling logical effort is same. Okay, that's why it is called unskewed. There is no favorism for any of the transition. But if you want to favor the um, rising transition, we have to go for the I skewed inverter. If you want to favor the falling transition, we go for the low skewed gates. Okay. First, we will start with the inverter, then we are going to see the two input NAND gate. For the I skewed inverter, see here, how to convert the, I, that is how to design the I skewed uh, gates and low skewed gate means, see here, uh, the favorism can be done by decreasing the size of the non-critical transistor. See here, for the high skewed, uh, it is favor the rising transition, right? I skewed is favoring the rising, whereas low skewed is favoring the falling transition. Okay, 
So rising is who is responsible out of PMAS and NMAS is definitely the rising is responsible by PMAS because if it is on, you will be getting output is 1. So PMAS is whole proprietor or um, is the person who is giving the or responsible for the rising transition. Right. So here, if you want to calculate the uh, logical effort for rising transition, you have to compare this high skewed inverter with the unskewed inverter. It should having both are a width is 2. That is both has to produce a resistance R. So if you are comparing these two, I uh, already told you logical effort is a formula which is equal to input capacitance of the I skewed inverter. Input capacitance how much it is? Here it is 2, it is half. So totally 2 plus 1 by 2 capacitance at the input side. Whereas in the unskewed inverter, the capacitance is 3C. So the logical effort for the rising is 2 plus 1 by 2C is nothing but the 5 by 2C divided by here I am having 3C. So how much it is 5 by 2C divided by 3C it will become 5 by 6. Similarly falling transition how we have to calculate the falling transition GD now. See here for calculating GD here the width is half. So we should not consider this unskewed inverter. Instead of that this is also unskewed inverter. Unskewed means both are having equal res resistance. Okay. See here. Here uh, width is 2 means resistance is 2 R by K. So it is R. Similarly here the width is 1 means the resistance is R. So both are equal resistance. So it is unskewed. Similarly here also. The width is 1 but it is 2 R by 1. Here R by 1 by 2 is nothing but again it produces 2 R resistance. Anyway both are producing same 2 R resistance. So it is also called unskewed inverter. Right. So uh, to calculating the falling transition GD for the high skewed inverter we have to compare with the unskewed inverter this one. So because the width is here it is half. Here also R. So here the width, uh, the capacitance at the input side is here also 5 by 2 into C divided by here it is the capacitance at the input side is 1 plus 1 by 2 into C which is nothing but the 3 by 2 into C. So if I am dividing 5 by 2 into C divided by 3 by 2 into C I will get what? 5 by 3. Right. So average is nothing but the 5 by 6 plus 5 by 3. Average is 5 by 6 plus 5 by 3 divided by 2. You will be getting 5 by 4. Right. Similarly low skewed inverter you have to calculate the logical effort for rising transition and falling transition. For rising transition we have to consider the this inverter because the width here is 1. Here also 1. Right. So what is the input capacitance here is. It is 2C capacitance because it is contributing 1 capacitance. This contributing 1 capacitance. Totally 2 capacitance at the input side of A. Similarly for this consideration of unskewed inverter. The input capacitance is 3 by 2C. So GU for this is nothing but the 2C divided by 3 by 2 into C. So you will be getting 4 by 3. Right. Similarly if you want to calculate the falling transition. You, you should not consider this inverter. Instead of that we have to consider this one. Because here also with this one. Here also with this one. Okay. So here with uh, capacitance is 2C. Here 3C. That's why we are having 2C by 3C. You will be getting 2 by 3. Right. So the average is nothing but the what? 4 by 3. 4 by 3 plus 2 by 3 divided by 2. So you will be getting 1. So like that we have to calculate the logical effort for the I skewed as well as low skewed inverters. Okay. 
similarly for the land gate i will explain you how to design uh, how to calculate the logical effort so this is the unskewed uh, land gate right so law, rising as well as falling both are having the equal 4 by 3 so it's called unskewed the average is 4 by 3 plus 4 by 3 by 2 you'll be getting 4 by 3 only the average so if you want to calculate the um, i skewed land gate for high that is arising transition gu we have to consider the rising that is y equal to 1 so if a or b any one is on you will be getting output equal to 1 so we can consider any one input a or b okay suppose if i am considering the input a this is connected to um, both p mass and n mass so totally uh, three capacitance will be available at this point because it is contributing two capacitance and this contributing one capacitance totally three capacitance so you know the formula three capacitance divided by the same we have to um, use the inverter okay always we have to compare with the inverter the inverter is a reference so you are comparing with the uh, this inverter because it is having the resistance of r it will also produces the contributing resistance of r so i have to consider this inverter input capacitance is 3c so 3c by 3c you will be getting 1 similarly if you want to calculate the falling transition you have to consider that is compare with the this inverter because it will provide the resistance of 2r it is also providing r plus r it will provide 2r right so we have to compare this with this inverter right so falling transition see here we can consider any one input so uh, the same way i'm considering the input a i'm having 3c capacitance okay divided by now here it is 3 by 2 capacitance so you will be getting what 3 3 will be cancelled too so this is falling transition so average is nothing but the here 1 plus 2 right 1 plus 2 divided by 2 you will be getting 3 by 2 so this is our average logical effort so like this we have to calculate the logical effort for any gauge okay so we have to remember two unskewed inverter this one as well as this one okay these two uh, unskewed inverter we have to use for all the gates right the next uh, last design consideration is this p by n ratio see the best p by n ratio of any logic gate is the ratio of p mass to n mass transistor width okay see here if you want to uh, make the transistor uh, if you want to make the uh, gate faster I have to use the formula that is the width of P mass I have to choose must be equivalent to root of the P mass width divided by N mass width. Right? Generally for the unskewed inverter we have the width is P mass is 2 N mass is 1 thereby the width of p mass I, uh, we have to choose root 2 root 2 is nothing but the 1.414 so if we are choosing like this p mass width is uh, 1.414 the delay will be reduced okay so with this i'm going to conclude the session next we are going to start the pseudo mr the next circuit part thank you all